you ever wonder how the Aztecs thought the world kicked off? Imagine gods duking it out, crying floods, and even cooking soup. Welcome to the Aztec myth of creation, where divine drama, bloodshed, and sacrifice are the main events. Stay tuned to witness the ultimate sacrifice that gave birth to the world as we know it. These ancient folks from what we now call Mexico weren't just architects and city planners. They had a cosmic Netflix series running in their heads, complete with gods, monsters, and plot twists that would make your favorite soap opera blush. The Aztecs believed in many gods and goddesses, each controlling different aspects of life and nature. Need a sunny day? There's a god for that. Want your crops to grow? Better keep that goddess happy. These gods were at the center of their myths, which were used to explain everything. Now let's talk about the five suns. No, it's not a new solar car company. This is the Aztec way of saying the universe has gone through five cosmic reboots. If you were an Aztec, you'd believe the world had gone through five different ages. Each age was created by the gods, ruled for a time and then destroyed, only for a new age to begin. Currently, we're living in the fifth version of the world. First Sun, the Age of Jaguar. The first sun was the Age of the Jaguar. Tezcatlipoca, let's call him Tez, one of those gods who loved chaos. He creates the world and hands it over to giants called Kinemetsin. These big guys standing a whopping 13 feet tall were just living their best giant lives, but Tez gets bored and morphs into a giant jaguar. Yep, he goes full big cat and unleashes his fury, turning those giants into jaguar chow, and just like that, the first age ends in a bloody mess. Second sun, the wind sun. Next up, we have the wind sun, Quetzalcoatl. Another god trying his hand at creation brings this world to life. Things are good until Tez, not one to let things go smoothly, smacks Quetzalcoatl so hard it creates a windstorm of epic proportions, the kind that covers the entire world. The wind is so fierce it doesn't just mess up your hair, it turns people into monkeys. Imagine everyone suddenly going ape, literally. Bye-bye humanity. Hello monkey business. The idea was that humans lost their humanity and were reduced to a more primitive form. Third Sun, the Reign of Fire Sun. Moving on, the third world is ruled by Tlaloc, the rain god. You'd think a rain god would be all about peace and calm, right? Wrong. Tez kidnaps Tlaloc's wife, sending him into a tailspin. He forgets his rain duties and instead unleashes a fiery apocalypse. Volcanoes explode, fire rains from the sky, and everything turns to ash. It's like the worst barbecue ever with a side of divine vengeance. This terrifying end shows the destructive power of nature, leaving nothing but burned earth behind. These stories weren't just bedtime tales for the Aztecs. They believed understanding and respecting these myths kept the universe in balance. That's why their lives were packed with rituals and sacrifices and ceremonies. Picture this, you're going to work, but first, you need to make sure the sun doesn't fall out of the sky by offering a ritual. Talk about job stress. From the grand ceremonies held in the heart of their bustling cities to the daily offerings made by families in their cozy homes, these beliefs influenced every aspect of Aztec life. Their entire lives revolved around keeping their gods happy. If the gods were smiling, life was sweet. But if the gods got grumpy, well, you'd better search for apocalypse shelter. At the heart of this cosmic circus were the priests and their grand temples, the spiritual control centers. These priests were like the original cosmic DJs, spinning rituals and sacrifices to keep the universe from crashing. The Templo Mayor in Tenochtitlan was their main stage. Think Coachella, but with more drums and dancing and a lot more blood. They believed these acts kept the sun shining and the world ticking. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, human sacrifice. To us, it sounds like a horror flick, but to the Aztecs, it was like paying their cosmic rent. The gods had apparently bled for humanity's creation, so humans had to return the favor. Captured warriors, chosen for their bravery, got the VIP treatment, straight to the altar. This wasn't seen as a gruesome end, but a shot at eternal glory and cosmic brownie points. But it wasn't just the priests working overtime to keep the gods chilled out. Everyday Aztecs had their rituals too. Simple stuff like offering food, flowers, and incense. They had special festivals to mark agricultural cycles and celestial events, making sure their daily grind was in sync with the divine. These folks had a calendar system more complex than a Rubik's Cube. 
they juggled a 260-day ritual calendar, the Tono Puohale, with a 365-day solar calendar, the Shuhupuali. When these two synced every 52 years, it was like cosmic clockwork magic. The new fire ceremony marked this alignment, a reminder of the perpetual creation and destruction. They put out the old fires and light new ones. Aztec mythology isn't just old stories, it's a window into their soul. These tales show how they viewed their place in the universe through myths, rituals, and sacrifices. They tried to understand and influence the cosmic forces at play. Their legacy still fascinates, showing a world where gods and humans dance together in an eternal cycle of black and white. So next time you enjoy a sunrise or ponder the universe's mysteries, remember the Aztecs. To them, every sunrise was a cosmic victory, every storm a divine tantrum, and every ritual a crucial part of keeping the universe's harmony. So if you loved this cosmic chaos and divine order, smash that like button and subscribe for more epic tales from ancient times. Drop a comment with your favorite Aztec god and share this video with your fellow history buffs. Keep your curiosity burning and we'll see you in the next one. Fourth Sun, the Water Age. Then we get to the Water Age, courtesy of Chalchutlique, the goddess of water. She's kind and nurturing, but when things go south, her tears trigger a catastrophic flood. We're talking a water world scenario here where everything gets submerged and humans turn into fish. This massive deluge represents the ultimate cleansing of the world. The flood washes everything away, leaving only aquatic life behind. This is where you'd want a really good diving suit. Fifth Sun, the Earthquake Sun. Finally, we land in the present, under the Fifth Sun. This one's a tag team effort by Nanahuatzin, aka Nana, and Tecusis Tecatl, aka Teku, who gave up their lives to become the sun and moon, all thanks to the sun god, Tonatiu. This guy wasn't content with just hanging around in the sky, no, he demanded sacrifices from other gods to give him the power to move across it. Enter Nana, a god who wasn't winning any beauty contests. He was disfigured and humble, the ultimate underdog. Despite his looks, he had balls. He chucked himself into a roaring fire and just like that, transformed into the sun. Then we have Teku. This god decided to follow Nana's lead, but got a serious case of cold feet. He hesitated before jumping into the fire, which is pretty relatable. I mean, who wouldn't? Because of this hesitation, he became the moon. So while the courageous got to be the big shiny sun, Teku ended up as the moon, always playing second place. This little cosmic drama highlights the Aztecs' love for epic sacrifices. It shows that even gods had to throw themselves into the fire, literally, to keep the universe running. But don't get too comfy because the Aztecs prophesied this age would end in catastrophic earthquakes. The ground shaking, buildings crumbling, and the earth tearing itself apart. Each of these five eras shows the Aztec belief of a constant being built up and torn down world, life in a wild cycle of creation, destruction, and trying to keep those gods happy with rituals and sacrifices. Because if you don't, well, you might just end up as cat food, a monkey, ashes, a fish, or rubble. But what about humans in all of this? What is the process of our creation? We're not just cosmic accidents in Aztec tales. The god Quetzalcoatl, think of him as a feathered snake with a penchant for DIY projects, went on a little underworld shopping spree for human bones. He faced numerous challenges, including being chased by spirits and deceived by the lord of the underworld. Despite these obstacles, he succeeded, added his own wound blood like some divine smoothie ingredient, and voila, humans were born. So next time you feel burnt out, remember you are basically bone soup with a dash of godly blood.